try to see where I can see most of you. I see most of you. Hopefully you're okay. Um, so let me, so I'm Dr. Kelly Campbell from the Psych Department. I've been Director for the Honors Program for the last few years. So this will be my fourth year going into the next. How many are, how many are graduating in uh, June 2018? Okay, and how many are graduating June 2019? Later than that? Okay, so you captured everybody? Okay. <laughs> Um, the honors program, you can't graduate in December. So you would need to, let's say if you're on track to graduate in December, if you want to participate in the program, you'd want to spread out your courses more and not take so many at a time so you can spread it out and graduate in June. So what I'll do is I'll provide an orientation and then whatever questions you have, you can ask me. And then after that, I'll also talk about Psychi um, in case you're interested in that too. Okay, so the way that it works is that the first thing you need to ask yourself, hopefully you've visited the Honors website, and that's where you'll find everything outlined in terms of whether you qualify for the program. So the first thing would be the GPA. So we like to see 3.5 or higher in the major, and then 3.25 and higher overall. Ideally, we prefer 3.5 in both, overall and in the major, but you can still get into the program if you're at least 3.25 overall. You just need a letter from your mentor if you're in between. So 3.25 to 3.5, you need a letter from the mentor. And if you don't have a mentor, don't worry. That's one of the other things that you need. Um, there are instructions on the website of how to find a mentor, but you can also come see me and then I'll give you some guidance to find a good match. The other thing for your grades, you need Psych 311 with a B plus or better. And you can take Psych 311 in the summer, even though you apply for the Honors Program in June. You can be enrolled in it through the summer and still be admitted to the program. It's just you don't learn if you're admitted until you finish 311 and get your grade, which is right before school starts. But it's a pretty common thing to have happen. A lot of our honor students right now, they took 311 in the summer. So don't worry about that. But it is one of those courses that it's better to take it earlier and take it again if you need to. Like if you're trying to get into grad school or the honors program, you can retake up to three courses at CSUSB. And usually they'd like you to have a C or below or to repeat a course, but if you're trying to do one of those two things, honors and grad school, you can petition and write a letter of why you need to be considered for that, and they will. So it's nice to have that buffer. Let's say if you really want to do the program, you take it early, and then you have a chance to redo it if needed in the summer, let's say. Then you need your writing requirement. And so that's usually SSCI 306, but we'll take other ones too, but that's the one we prefer. And I think that one is a B or better. I think B or B plus, it's on the website. Okay, so then what else do you need? You need a personal statement outlining, it's usually like I think two pages double spaced outlining why you want to join the program. And so there you'll talk about getting research experience, getting that personalized mentorship with, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a faculty mentor that you get better mentorship than you could any other way as an undergraduate. You'll be working on your thesis together. It's really intense. I mean, not to scare you, it's not that type of intense. It's just that you grow a lot quickly. Um, and then grad school goals. You want to talk about that in the statement too and how this fits with your grad school goals. And then you'll have an application that you fill out, which is on the website too. And we look at your CSUSB specific GPA. So if you're a transfer student and if that brings down your GPA, just give us the CSUSB specific one, and that's usually higher. And so that's what we look at for the, for the application. And then you'll list your coursework. And there's like, to be honest, I don't know why they want all the coursework listed on this application, but the, anyways, the department wants it. But usually there's not enough room. Like many people have taken more site courses than they can even fit on the thing. Um, so just choose the ones that are most upper division, most recent, or something like that, if you have too many. And then your faculty mentor. So some people, they've been working all along in someone's lab, and they say, you know, I want to do clinical psych, and this person is a clinical faculty, so they're a natural fit for me. And so you might ask them. Other people, they might be working in a lab, and it was just because that's the only lab they could get into that was taking students, and it doesn't match with their grad school goals, and maybe they want to switch mentors for their honors program. So you want to have an open discussion with both the person whose lab you're in and then talk to the person you're thinking of serving as your mentor because sometimes professors, 
take you into their lab because they expect you to be their honor student. You had a high GPA, this is the path they see for you, and that's what they're expecting, that you're going to continue with this project, let's say, and so you'll want to figure that out and have an open discussion with them. And it's not to say that you have to switch, because you don't have to be, let's say if you want to do IO psychology, you don't have to work with an IO psychologist through honors in order to apply to the IO grad program. It's nice because then they know you and they can speak on your behalf when they're reviewing applications, but it's not necessary. So you could still work with, let's say, a social psychologist, if that's the lab you're in, and then apply to IO. It's just the research experience that they really value and that you're in the honors program, period. So those are really great things for grad school. So you just have to talk probably with me about that decision. A lot of people come meet with me and we talk about whether it's better for you to switch or stay. And so that's fine. Um, okay, so then what happens? So you apply in like the third week of June. You'll see the application deadline. You turn it into the office staff. Don't put it in my mailbox because it goes somewhere else first. It goes for a GPA check before I get your applications. Uh, so the staff will take care of that part. And then you'll learn about admission into the program. If you're not in um, 311 over the summer, you'll learn late July usually. I try to get them back sooner, but basically as soon as I get them back, there's a committee I have to meet with, and usually by the time I get them back from the GPA check, one of our committee members is overseas, and then it just, it turns so long, and I want to turn it quick, but it's not, it's not how it goes. So usually it's end of July, sometimes beginning of August. Um, soon as you hear, you get in touch with your mentor, because then you'll want to start working on your project, maybe reading some literature prior to the school year starting, or whatever they want you to do. Uh, it's nice to come in ahead rather than behind because you'll have your honors cohort and everyone's doing a big project and you don't need to compare yourself to the students but they naturally do that. They start saying, why are you already collecting data? And I haven't even submitted an IRB proposal. And then they get really panicked and they don't. So it's nice when you come in a little ahead because you don't get that kind of panic. But there's no need for it anyways because even the ones who are behind get perfectly on track. Every mentor is different in how they mentor students. So. Okay, so then what happens? So let's say you're admitted to the program, you've talked to your mentor. In the fall, there's a seminar course you participate in. So it's us usually Tuesdays, Thursdays, 2 to 4. 4 to 6? 4 to 6. Wait, 4 to 6. Um, that could change, but that's when it usually is. So because you don't know if you're going to be admitted, you normally sign up for a course when it's time to register for the fall. That's like a placeholder course that you drop if you get into the honors program to add the seminar. Some people overload and then take the seminar in addition to that, but I don't really recommend that. Better to just hold, hold something in case you don't get in and drop it. So then in the seminar course, it's not really an intensive homework assignment type course. It's more of a professional development class, and so you're learning how to become a professional and how to become an academic and get socialized into that world and network with the other students in the cohort. And um, do some assignments but they're not too time consuming, and they're intended to get you practice for graduate school, to do the types of things you'll be doing in grad school, like presentations, in-class presentations, one group, one individual, those kinds of things. And then in the winter and the spring, you just work with your mentor, you don't attend any class. So, I mean, you start working with your mentor from the moment you get in, all through fall, but in winter and spring, you just don't have anything but that, that mentoring relationship. You usually present at conferences, so a lot of the honor students go to the Western Psychological Association conference. That happens in April usually. And almost all of them go present there. And then at Meeting of the Minds on campus, the Student Research Symposium, they present there too, and that's in May. That one's mandatory for all the honor students to present their thesis work. So usually they take what they did at WPA and present it at Meeting of the Minds, the same poster. And that's about it that I can think of. Um, at the end, you'll have your thesis and that's in June, and then you'll get a special cord, we'll have a ceremony, the college award ceremony, you'll cross the stage, you can invite your family or friends, and then you'll get your cord and you'll wear it at graduation around your neck and you put it on your CV that you graduated with honors, so that'll look really good as well. Um, but the most important aspect is you're getting that research experience, so that, you know, that really, really enhances your graduate school um, admission. It, it looks really good to have done that. So any questions that you can think of? How big does the cohort tend to be? The cohort is no more than 30. Um, they ranged 18 one year, 27 one year, and we're about 19 this year. 
It's usually 3% of our graduating class. 2 to 3% of our graduating class. The top 2 to 3%, so you can say that, you know, when you're writing your personal statements for graduate programs, you can say that you're admitted to the honors program, which is for the top 2 to 3% of our graduating class. And our graduating class, like 400 students. So, it's pretty big. <clears throat> so you said you can't graduate in December, that's for fall. Can you graduate in winter? No. <laughs> it's a year-long program, so you have to graduate in spring. Some people, let's say if you already have spread out your coursework and really want to do it, some people, if they're close to it already, add a minor, if it just takes a few more courses to get a minor. But you do have to look at how things are panning out with, I want to say it's the registrar, or maybe even the peer advising center might be able to do this. Sometimes you are forced to graduate, so some students, they think they're going to join the honors program, but when they look at the number of units they have, they can't add a minor because they're going to force them to graduate. Because we have too many students at our university, so they want to get rid of anybody who's qualified to graduate. So you have to talk to someone about that planning and see if you're eligible. My question was, I didn't know you said it earlier, um, you guys send out if you got admitted or accepted to the program, you said late June, early July, if you've already taken the writing and the... Late July, late July early I'm August. sorry, early August, mm -hmm. if you've already taken prior to summer. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if I can do it sooner, I will. The other thing that sometimes interferes, I'm in South Africa usually till the third week of July, but this year I'm not doing that program, I'm skipping a year or so, a year or two, we'll see but um, that might speed things along because they might be doing the grade checks late because they're like, she's not even here anyways, even though I asked them for the file, like, <laughs> but anyways, we'll, we'll see. Might be a bit earlier. Do you have any examples of projects people have done with us? Yeah, so I do have examples. When you get into the program, I have developed this Blackboard site that's like, in my opinion, unbelievable. Has every resource imaginable that could help us <laughs> Really, I honestly think, like, there's nothing that I'm missing on this Blackboard site. <laughs> You'll be so prepared. And so one thing I did was I, I asked the faculty for all the award-winning theses, that one most outstanding thesis for our college, and there's example projects on our Blackboard site. And you can see different examples, like from I.O., social, clinical, so different fields, too. Yeah. And your mentor could also do that, too. So you could say, you know, I'm working with this person, it's probably beneficial not only to see the award-winning ones, but what they like in the thesis, because these are their students from the other years. So you could get examples from them, too. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, do you have to graduate in four years? Or, like, like he's, um, no? No. As long as we graduate by June, yeah. then you could still apply then? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the best case, if you know anybody, is to apply in, like, to do the honors program in your junior year if you've met the requirements. Because the best honors students that I've noticed do that, and they get a lot of information in the professional development seminar that is very useful to them. And I think it just enhances what they do, like, they change what they do, so they become really marketable candidates and they can get into PhD programs right out of um, their undergrad. So I've noticed the two years I've been doing it so far, there's been, so I don't have data from this year yet, but the other two years I have data, and the ones who did it in their junior year were really strong. Like they won the CSUSB research competition, they got right into PhD programs. So I think you get information in the seminar that you're like, why didn't I have this before? But it really helps you shape your, your path. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you have people in the club, or if you know anybody that, you know, you think they're too young for it, tell them this info because mm -hmm. the problem is that usually people leave Site 311 until too late mm -hmm. and then they also feel like, oh no, it's full. But if it's full and you're planning to do the honors program, just go talk to the professor and say, I want to get into the honors program, I need Site 311, they'll usually put you in. So don't let that deter you. But it's just better to plan early because the earlier you get the information, not, you can't do it sophomore, but usually by junior, some can. So if you know people, tell them the information so that they might do that. Any other questions? I can talk a little bit about SciKai and then you can ask questions still on the honors program if you want. So I'm going to take over as the SciKai advisor and I'm still in transition um, because I'm meeting with the SciKai students in March and uh, the current advisor, Christina Hastija, we're going to meet in March. 
But I'm gathering information about the organization so I can at least start talking about it. So for that one, you need 3.0 or higher to join. It's an international honor society for psychology students and faculty. There's a one-time application fee of $50. And what I would recommend is that you go on the Psychi website. It's a, a national website that you can search through because once you join, you qualify for a lot of different, um, first of all, board member opportunities, like you could serve as the president or vice president of our local chapter here. So it looks really good on your CV to hold an officer position. But you also qualify for scholarships and grants for your research and travel funding and things like that. So you can apply for those things. So it's good to visit the website so you can explore it, so you can say to yourself, are these some of the resources I would like to use and apply for? And then you know if you want to join Psychi. Um, but you do need to meet that GPA requirement of 3.0 at least. Um, and then I think it'll be this spring that we'll elect the new officers. So it's something you'll want to look at now. Kind of like, think of it as kind of a little bit before your honors application is due. It's something that you'll want to decide if you're interested in. So you could get in touch with me and say, yes, I want to apply and mm -hmm. I want to, I'm interested in, in an officer position. Um, and we're finding a way to, you know, blend Psych Club with Psychi in the sense that I don't really feel there should be two separate clubs planning events that are psych related. So any psych related event should be planned by, you know, both entities. Um, and that way they're even able to qualify for additional funding if needed because they're separate clubs, but, you know, they're going to plan the event together. They could both apply for funding to put on different events. Um, but, and then in terms of meetings, we'll, we'll figure that out. We might have meetings together. We can't have one board. We need two boards still. Mm -hmm. So we're going to iron out some details, but you'll be working along with the site club to plan events and do things like that. Um, and then you can put it on your Vita. So you'll put that, like there's a, you know, when I say, you guys know what I mean when I say Vita? It's like your academic resume, curriculum vitae, it's Latin. Um, so CV for short, or Vita also for short. Um, and so that, an academic resume, something just goes on and on and on, it never ends. It, it contains all your academic experience, and so like mine's 30 pages or something like that. But you can find, you know, more senior researchers will have a 50 to 60 page Vita. Um, so anyways, there's a section of your Vita where you can list your honors, and you could put it there, or your professional associations, you could list it under that section. And then you'll also get another cord. So you have another cord around your neck when you graduate. Um, and so, yeah, it's not a competition or anything, but definitely there's some students that cross the stage that have all these sashes and cords. And, trees. Yeah, it's a lot. So, but I mean, I'm sure it feels good. You know, you worked hard for those things, so, yeah. I did have a question about site kind, because I did apply in the beginning of uh, fall quarter, uh -huh. and I did a check and everything, but I never heard anything at all. Yes, I know, it's a bit disorganized. For some reason, ever since I took over the honors program, I always have all the various clubs come talk to the honors program so they can learn about things. But Psychi, every time I say, who can talk about Psychi? I don't know, who knows? Nobody knows what it is or what's going on. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just get this organized. So unfortunately, they collected checks and applications and never cashed them. So I just told them this is very unethical. You can't keep people's checks and not cash them. They need to know when the money's coming out. So apparently they're transitioning right now, so the treasurer has authority to cash them. So within the next few <coughs> weeks, it should be cashed and you should have full access to whatever. Mm -hmm. But just get in touch with me, let's say by the end of March, if, you know, because then I'll be fully transitioned myself. Okay. And so I can help. In my view though, um, and I'll say this from personal experience, like two years ago, Psych Club wasn't the way it was like right now either. But what I did instead of being like, oh, you know, you know, doing anything or anything, I kind of took it upon myself where I'm like, you know what, I kind of want to change this. And I became an officer and that is a great way where you can actually change that and make a difference and make the club, mm -hmm. you know, into bigger, more successful things. So yeah. that's a great opportunity for you guys to go ahead and do that. And you could run for the board for both. You guys have your elections when you mm -hmm. have your... Yeah, we typically have them like the end of the year as okay. well. Mm -hmm. So you could run on the board for both, mm -hmm. you know, especially because they're going to overlap. It would be actually helpful if some people are on mm -hmm. both boards. Yeah. Any other questions about either? Mm -hmm. I was wondering, what are the applications do for the honors and the Psychi? <laughs> Psychi is an ongoing application. Um, 
you know, you could submit it for the following year around the same time you would submit for, if you want to run for an officer position, I would say submit your application anytime between now and like April. Um, if you don't care about that, an, an officer position, then you could just submit them like the same time you submit your honors application, and that would be the, around the third week of June. So if you go on the website, I, I've asked for the new application to be uploaded, it should be there. So if you go to the honors website, you scroll down a little bit, it's a little bit hard to see, but it is there, and you click on a link and it opens the application, and the deadline's at the bottom of it. And I always put it the third week of June, I just can't remember what day I put it. I think it's like the week after finals. Thank you. Anybody else? How many people think they'll be applying for the honors program in here? Okay. And how many of you are applying this June? So some of you, okay. Well, you can always be in touch with me, so. You know, sometimes people feel like they don't qualify because, let's say, their GPA is a little low or something. But then they come meet with me and then, you know, we look at their CSUSB specific. Or let's say you haven't factored in that spring you could get all A's, hopefully. And so you could be, you know, closer than you think. Or let's say you're having problems because you're scared. Some people are scared of the honors program. Just come see me. Like, if you're scared, that's the reason to apply. Whenever you're scared in life, that's the reason to be <laughs> <laughs> Unless it'll cost you your life, like, don't you know, jump off something. That's when you grow the most. Do things that you're yeah. <laughs> It's always a good sign if you're scared. Okay, well, yeah. So how would we be able to contact you? Or? Just email me. That's the best way. Because when I'm on campus, I'm one meeting to the next, and I'm like not even... Okay. Yeah, but I can always make meetings, and usually for that same week that you write to me, you send me all your availability, I can usually get you in that week, if not the week after. But email is the best way because when I'm here, I'm not in my office. Usually I'm going one thing to the next, or if I'm in my office, I'm too busy to talk. So. And if you ever email me and you don't hear back within three days, just send it again. I get 300, and I counted one day like 350 emails a day. And it takes me like five to seven hours to keep up. And sometimes I don't have five to seven hours on email, so they get buried really fast, really easily. So just send it again. Three days, it'll be buried, but usually you'll hear within three days. So that's it. Okay, so you can come meet with me one-on-one -on -one to the extent that you want to. And it doesn't have to be just about these things. It can be anything that you think I can help with. Mm -hmm. And that's what any professor here. But I feel like that's a great thing about the psych department. All the professors are so helpful. So if you guys have questions of master's programs, what you want to do in life, like, I don't know, stress relief or whatever, you can go <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> like, they're all very awesome. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, if no one else has any questions, thank you very much, thank you. Kelly. Thank you, too, for yeah. writing and hosting yeah. and advertising. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's pizza. So if you guys want more pizza, can we get a second slice? Take it. I don't want it. Go. So it's free. <laughs> Fill up your water bottles. And yeah, thank you guys. <laughs>